so I'm, uh, I'm Daniel Aguirre. I uh, work at the Fleet Science Center in beautiful San Diego, California. I am very much enjoying this rain. Um, um, send some our way, please. <laughs> So uh, I'm the community engagement manager there, and um, we take those words very seriously, community engagement. It's, it's um, how do we engage with communities in a way that's meaningful, and what do we mean community by community, and how do we create community? Um, and I know that you're still wondering, what does that even mean? So I feel like this really represents what I do. <laughs> In a really accurate way. Um, it can feel like that. It can feel like trying to get a lot of people who don't know they could work together to align their missions and, and work together um, and to prioritize communities. Um, knowledge, interests, um, acknowledge their barriers and, and, and work with them to address uh, these, these gaps. Um, so we operate uh, in a building um, that this is the building. <laughs> we, um, you know, this, it's comfortable for us in there. It's a really beautiful space. We get to receive hundreds of thousands of, of people walking through our doors every day. Um, but we don't just exist in these walls and science does, doesn't, informal science doesn't just happen inside of these walls. Um, and so, we don't like to say that we're a science center. We are a community organization who happens to have a science center as one of the tools for engaging with audiences. Um, and, and we do this in different ways, but we have some walls, uh, other walls that define us, and these are all the metaphorical walls that have been built up about our institutions over time. Um, and it's really important for us to make sure that we're um, addressing these things. And, and one of the main ones that um, I'll ask you to keep, keep an eye out for is, is science isn't part of my culture. And I've heard people say that, and that one cuts deep. Um, but science isn't only happening, uh, again, in the Science Center or in school or institutions of formal learning. Um, it's happening everywhere. And so in 2015, we approached a community. Well, we approached several communities, and one came out. Um, very strongly with their community leaders and um, gave birth to this program called 52 Weeks of Science. The community's Barrio Logan, they're a Chicano activist community. Um, definitely not the easiest community to start a relationship out with because they have some real deep issues with um, gentrification and they're battling gentrification and so we don't want to come in and be those agents of gentrification or be perceived as that. Um, and so we worked with them to really listen first and, and understand what um, their needs, interests, and barriers were as it related to STEM engagement. Um, and so it was really important to highlight the science that was happening locally. Um, but what happens when the community doesn't identify with science and they don't recognize science as part of their daily life? How do you highlight the science that's happening locally? Um, the program uh, started very like super low key by having one free event a week every single week of the year, nothing major, <laughs> um, hence 52 weeks of science, but that's not what that means. It doesn't mean that there is one event a week every single week of the year. It means that science is happening all year long. Um, and so the, the foundation of it was really meaningful community engagement. Um, to be intentional and to be um, responsive to communities' needs and interests by listening to them. Um, and that helps with buy-in and, and our approach. Um, and something that we'll get into during our discussion is how do you get started in something like that and what do those conversations sound and feel like? Um, and when I say that, uh, Chick that uh, Barrio Logan is, was not the easiest neighborhood to just come in and talk to, um, it's because they have imagery like this um, you know, that screams, no, you know, get out, get away, um, you know, it, but it really, this is an invitation to have a dialogue um, and, to, and to face some of our history. Um, so I want to give you a couple of examples of how we do this. Again, it's free weekly STEM events. 
Um, that was the original embodiment. Since, um, since the program launched, we have since been able to transition the program to so that the community is 100% driving it right now. And I've trained a, a group of students how to run this program, and they own it completely. Um, so science isn't part of my culture. Um, this is uh, Masa. Uh, he has a first and last name, but we know him as Masa. Um, I know his first and last name, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, uh, so Masa, a um, couple years ago, we, we uh, had a conversation about how can we highlight science that is happening locally and that's culturally relevant. And one of the things that popped up in my mind, and it's a very long story of how that popped up, and I'm happy to tell it in some other setting where there's alcohol involved. Um, uh, we landed on lowriders. <laughs> Duh, right? That is steam in the wild right there. So um, what we did is we brought out 15 different lowriders, and you can see some of them around there. Um, all had different types of technology in them from like how, the, how it began to like sort of the transition. So there was some janky lowriders out there, and then there was these beautiful machines, of course. Um, but really, the evolution of the technology and the foundation of, for people to see, like, I see lowriders almost every day in this community, and that is a mobile science. <laughs> That's mobile science right there. Um, but science isn't part of my culture. I, I don't identify with science. I am not a scientist. I didn't go to school. The thing that killed me was um, Masa, I asked him to be the presenter, and he said, who am I to teach anyone anything. And that r really resonated with me because there's a humility in my culture that we, that is both a blessing and a curse. And part of that is that we don't prioritize knowledge gained through experience. And this man has been building lowriders for over 25 years. So he knows some shit, right? He knows some things. And so he, uh, yeah, I said shit. Um, so um, it's really important to, to highlight that and to, and to give value to that knowledge gained through experience. And so he said, no, I'm not going to do it. And I said, okay, fine. Well, can you be there just to ask the questions? Because I've never built a lowrider, so I'm going to have some questions that people are asking me. And then he started telling me, all right, well, I said, so what's this? And he said, that's a cylinder. Um, but in order for that piece to work, we actually need to calculate the pounds per square inch. And then we also have to make sure that the dumps are aligned over here because you want the car to go up, but you also need that thing to come back down. <laughs> and so like, he's like explaining all these things to me. And at the end of the day, this happened. He is a presenter. If I would have brought in an external partner to present in a community like Barrio Logan, I would have been that agent that I don't want to be. Um, and so context, this was a few days after Donald Trump was elected, and it felt super weird, the vibes. Um, not to get too political, but the vibes were weird, man. Uh, so it felt like this country is never going to come together again, and we're all like just so divided. And then I, we had this event, and then there's just like a really rich, diverse representation of the community that came out. Um, and it was science nerds and uh, the epitome of lowrider culture and, and picture that in your mind. That's exactly what it looked like. Um, and by the way, that's right. There are women backyard engineers. Um, these women built their own lowriders. Uh, and it was really cool to see little girls saying like, you built this? You, you know how to do this? And Hell yeah, you know, so that's really, that's really cool. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, and I'll go super quick through these, is um, how do you highlight the science that's happening locally? That's the theme here, and how is it equitable? Well, we partnered with local businesses, and we partnered with local artists, and we had these artists, we challenged them, and they were challenged. Um, to create art pieces that represented the science taking place in each of these businesses. And it was a true challenge because it had to align their artistic point of view with the business's aesthetic and also talk about the science. So we had some really cool stuff happen. Um, this is the library science, and, and I'm happy to talk about this a little bit 
more to explain some of the hidden imagery that's there, but you wouldn't think that there's a lot of science happening in libraries, but you think about the Dewey Decimal System, you see the Wi-Fi signal, there's a magnifying glass there because you can search now. Um, bonus points because they included the 52 Weeks of Science logo at the top there. Um, there and the Dewey Decimal System was represented through Mayan numerals, that building, um, so there's that pyramid and right at the top is the temple. That represents the, the library itself because the architect um, designed that library, designed it with Mayan influence in mind. And so during, uh, I think it's the, one of the equinoxes, the sun sh shines a beam that goes through this little window and it shines straight through to the other end of the library. Super cool, li like uh, a lot of Mayan temples. Um, some of them took it very literal, which was great because if you go into mishmash, that's exactly what this is. It's a, it's a mishmash of futurism with like pinup, and um, so we talked a little bit about the science of bread. Um, this uh, local artist uh, named Chicle, uh, which means bubblegum, uh, did sort of like the Ciencia del Café, which is coffee, and, and paying a homage to the ingredients themselves. Um, and we actually had two coffee shops that wanted to participate in this. The other one was uh, Dia Bassett and Seed to Cup, and she made this sculpture that is, it's pretty big. She rummaged through uh, Ryan Brothers' um, trash and uh, <laughs> disc, disc, discards and, and made this thing out of all of the things that they were going to throw away anyway. Um, it was really cool. Um, and then uh, Monica Diaz, um, she made the periodic table of alimentos, um, which is kind of a play on words because elementos is elements. You're getting some Spanish still today. All right, uh, and so that's a lot bigger than it actually looks. Um, and all of the, the abbreviations are um, menu items as well. So she aligned all of those, which was pretty cool. Um, and then one of the artists was so good that he got, his proposal got picked for two different artists. Um, and so that's Aled again, and he did STEM beer. Um, and that's the whole brewing process. And that particular brewery, we did a three-part series on engineering craft beer. And it wasn't this BS like, here are the hops, here are the, here's the water. Beer, buy our beer. No, we dove into it, into the science of the actual ingredients. What's the number one ingredient in beer? Water. I heard one person say it. it's water. Um, <laughs> so anyway, those are some of the ways that we're doing uh, this engagement um, in what we believe are meaningful ways and what the community has told us are meaningful ways. So thank you so much for, for hearing our presentations and being interested in what we have to say enough to be here today.